Entering a new relationship can be an exciting time, feeling those butterflies when you see that person, smiling at your phone when you get a text from them. But of course, so many relationships end up being very short-lived once you realize that you just aren't right for the other person, and that is totally okay. Especially when the relationship only lasted a few weeks, most people can break things off with the expectation that things will go smoothly and that there won't be too many hurt feelings on either side. However, for some people, relationships in general aren't about finding the perfect partner to spend your time with. It's about control. And when this type of person loses their control over the other, things can turn deadly. That is unfortunately what happened to Lily James. And let me tell you, what happened to her is devastating. Lily James was born in May of 2002 to parents Jamie and Peta, and she was raised alongside her little brother Max in New South Wales in Australia. Lily was described by those who knew her as being outgoing, compassionate, and bubbly. She was loyal, intelligent, and full of energy and enthusiasm. She was kind to everyone and always went out of her way to make those closest to her feel loved. She was also the type of person who loved a challenge, excelling at almost everything that she put her mind to. Growing up, Lily loved playing sports, especially dance and water polo. She was part of the water polo team at her school, which was coached by her father, Jamie. Jamie was known to be very involved with Lily's sports, so they had a special close bond through that. She was known to be a champion swimmer after she won an under-17s event in 2019. She also won awards in dance competition as a teenager as well. After graduating from Danepak Anglican School for Girls in 2020, Lily went on to study sports business at the University of Technology in Sydney, Australia. While studying there, Lily also worked part-time at the prestigious St. Andrews Cathedral School as a water polo coach. She was pretty much always busy juggling her classes while also excelling at her job as a coach. She loved coaching her students and they loved her as a coach. Her energetic, encouraging, and vibrant personality had such a lasting impact on those students. One of the parents of a student who Lily coached said, quote, She was a light who cared about all of her students. She took the time to write a card to each and every one of the team, specifically focusing on their individual personalities, beauty, and talents. It was a short time with her, but it was meaningful and joyful. A light bright like the sun first thing in the morning or a full moon glowing at night. She truly was a gift to everyone who knew her. However, on the evening of Wednesday, October 25th, 2023, 21-year-old Lily's parents, Jamie and Peta, realized that she hadn't returned home from her shift at school that evening like she normally did. So, they called the police to report Lily as a missing person right away. I don't think there was too much concern from police at that point because there wasn't much of a search done initially, but what we do know is that just before midnight on that same day, police received a second call. This time, the caller told authorities that there was a female body in the St. Andrews Cathedral School that needed to be investigated. The caller gave very specific directions as to where the body could be located. So, police headed there and searched around the school before they did end up finding a body. They found the body of a young woman in the bathroom of the school's gymnasium, the exact location where the caller said it would be. Right away, police knew that this young woman was murdered because she had such serious head injuries from being beaten to death that she was almost completely unrecognizable. She died a horrific, violent, brutal death. Of course, after finding this body, the investigation into the murder began. In the days after, the school sent out texts to the community to inform them that classes at the campus would be paused and the campus was closing down due to the incident, so many students were moved to a different campus so that they could complete their studies there. From there, police closed off a perimeter around the campus as well as in the areas directly surrounding the building. They conducted line searches to scour the area to see if there was any evidence that would come up. They combed through everything they could find, desperate to solve this depraved, savage murder. By the morning of Thursday, October 26th, the badly beaten body that was found at the school 
was positively identified as 21-year-old Lily James. According to the later autopsy, it appeared that she had been beaten to death after suffering multiple blows to the head, most likely from a hammer. Of course, after finding out the news that Lily had been brutally beaten to death, her parents, brother, and everyone else who knew and loved her were devastated. Family, friends, students, and staff all came out in droves to show their support for Lily and talk about just how amazing of a person she truly was. In the very community where Lily James lived, locals gathered in grief and disbelief, lighting a candle for the third woman in the area lost to domestic violence this year, the 55th victim in Australia. Her smile has been seen far and wide this week, just 21 years old, the picture of innocence lost now hoping to be a symbol of change. The tears and flowers continued. Fly high, beautiful girl, this card reads, left by the Danebrook Aquatic Centre, where Lily was a champion swimmer. Her best friend, Christina, paying tribute to Lily, saying, for 16 years, you were my sister and my everything. I love you more than anything in this entire world. We had so much planned together, so much to do, and so much to experience. You will forever be my angel above. Now, as a part of the investigation, police looked into the CCTV footage from inside the school, as well as in the surrounding areas. From that, they were able to put together a little bit of a timeline. So, by around 7 p.m. on October 25th, cameras picked up Lily walking into the gym's bathroom with a man following closely behind her, entering the bathroom just after her. It appeared that both of them are in the bathroom for about an hour before only the man is seen walking out. Lily never emerged from the bathroom, so it is believed that that is when Lily was attacked and that was the man who attacked her. And thankfully, when police saw the CCTV footage, they were quickly able to identify the man they saw. This man was 24-year-old Paul Thyssen. Paul was originally from the Netherlands before him and his family moved to Australia in 2015. At the time, Paul attended St. Andrew's School for years 10 through 12. While there, he was also a sports captain before he graduated and returned back to the Netherlands for a few years. But he did ultimately return back to Australia after he obtained a working holiday visa. There, he worked for the St. Andrew's School full-time as a year 13 teacher as well as a cricket and hockey coach. People who knew Paul had many differing things to say about him. Many of his peers at school, when he attended school, said that he was likable, smart, and a good student. He was passionate about sports, he was talented, and was a pretty happy guy. However, those who knew him as a coach, including a few students, described him as arrogant and unpleasant. Some said that those who had negative views of Paul were usually men, while women seemed to like him more. So, I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean, but he seems like the type of guy where you either loved him or you hated him. At least, that's sort of what I got from what people were saying about him. In August of that year, Paul moved into a semi-detached flat with two other roommates, a young female, and a fellow male hockey player. There, people around him said that he mostly kept to himself and didn't cause much trouble. Now, it turned out that just five weeks before Lily's death, her and Paul actually started a relationship together. Those who knew them said that they weren't public yet, some reports even calling it a secret relationship, though those closest to Paul knew that he was seeing Lily. So to me, it didn't necessarily seem like it was a secret relationship that they didn't want anybody to know about. It seemed more like it was a very new thing, so they weren't just like telling everybody about each other yet. They weren't like posting pictures of each other on Facebook or anything like that quite yet, because again, it was a very new relationship. But just before her death, friends of Lily said that she actually ended the relationship. It was said that Paul was known to be a bit controlling, while Lily was more of a people pleaser, so she wouldn't want to see anybody hurt. So, it's thought that maybe Lily was trying to let Paul down easy and didn't want to just cut things off with him, and that is why she was willing to continue spending time with him after the relationship ended. More on this in just a minute. Now, those who knew Lily and Paul when they were in a relationship said that there were never any obvious red flags. 
they didn't argue, and there was no obvious domestic violence. In fact, it seemed that Paul didn't have a history of violence to begin with. So, finding out what happened after Lily was found in that bathroom really shocked everybody who knew the both of them. Going off of that CCTV footage from the school which identified Paul, police were able to create a more solid timeline of his movements from before and after the murder. On the morning of the attack, so October 25th, Paul was seen on CCTV footage purchasing a hammer from the hardware store located just down the street from his home. Then they found out that Paul had actually borrowed a 2003 Lexus sedan from a family member and drove that car to work on the day of the murder, which was different than what he normally did to get to the school. I'm not sure if he usually used public transport or if he had a different car or if he usually walked. It isn't really made clear in the reports but it was reported that he drove that specific car on purpose that day, that it was a borrowed car, it was not his car, and it wasn't normally the car that he drove to school. So that was different about that day, and it's thought that he did this most likely because that is what allowed him to get away from the school so quickly after the murder. Then, as we know, at 7 p.m. that day, him and Lily are seen entering the gym bathroom together. Like I said, Lily had just ended their brief five-week relationship just before that. How this whole situation went down could have gone in one of two ways. First, it's thought that maybe Paul got Lily to go into the bathroom with him to talk, possibly about giving him another chance. When she said no, that they would not continue their relationship, he might have just lost it, and that is when he beat her with the hammer. Either that, or he went to school that day with the intention of killing her, he lured her into the bathroom, and then trapped her in there, and immediately just whipped out the hammer and beat her to death. Most likely because, again, he was upset with her for ending their relationship. Around the same time that it is believed that Lily was beaten to death, it was found that Lily's cell phone was actually used to text her dad, asking him to pick her up from the school. So obviously, given the timing of the text messages, it is thought that somehow Paul accessed her phone and texted her dad from her phone. We don't exactly know how he did this, it's possible that he memorized her passcode from the time that he was dating her. That's possible if he truly was a very controlling person and he demanded that he have her passcode. It's also possible that he picked up her hand after beating her to death and then used her fingerprint to access the phone and send out the message. We don't know for sure either way, but I will come back to this text in just a minute. After that, police used cell phone data from Paul's phone to locate his next movements. By just before midnight, the same day as the murder, again on the 25th, Paul made a phone call in the area near the gap in Vaucluse, just above the Diamond Bay Reserve clifftop. This is an area known for multi-million dollar homes with amazing panoramic views, and it just so happened that Paul had a friend who lived there. Actually, just weeks before Lily's death, both her and Paul visited that friend who lived in that area. But this time, he returned to the area for a much more sinister reason. Upon investigating the area, police found CCTV footage that captured more of Paul's movements. By 8.47 p.m. on October 25th, almost two hours after following Lily into that bathroom, Paul is captured driving in that borrowed white 2003 Lexus to the area before he parks it near the end of that road. By 9.04, he is seen getting out of the car and then walking back up the road before he finds a place to dump the hammer that was used to kill Lily. After that, he's seen walking back to his car and just sitting there for two hours. After that, he calls triple zero to report his crime to the police. Like I said, it was just before midnight that someone called the police to report a body that was at the school. It was confirmed that Paul was the one who made that call, and that is the call that police used to track down his location to that area. However, by the time police made the trace and found that CCTV footage which confirmed that Paul was there, 
Paul was nowhere to be found. So the authorities deployed air searches as well as ground searches to scour the area to see if they could pick up on any more clues that could lead them to Paul's whereabouts. While searching, they did end up finding this white Lexus that Paul was driving and they towed it away for further investigation. They also found a garbage bin that contained a set of Apple AirPods thought to be Paul's. Other than that though, on that day, police found nothing further that could be used to pinpoint Paul's location. However, by 8 a.m. on Friday, October 27th, workers at a construction site in Vaucluse called the police to report what they thought looked like a body lying on the rocks being pounded by the waves just off of the Diamond Bay Reserve, the same area where police had been searching for Paul just that previous day. Police arrived and they worked with a rescue helicopter as well as a jet ski to retrieve the body from that water. When they got closer, they found a body that looked to be naked, battered, and bloated. The body was located slumped between the rocks at the base of that cliff. After hours of working as a team through those tough and rugged water conditions, rescue workers were able to get the body out of the water, it turned out that the body actually belonged to 24-year-old Paul Dyson. It appeared that after killing Lily, he drove to that cliff, got rid of the murder weapon, and then sat in the car for two hours before calling police on himself. Then he walked to the edge of that cliff and jumped off, ending his own life. It's 8.47 Wednesday night. Paul Tyson arrives at Diamond Bay Reserve in Vaucluse an hour after he's suspected of killing his ex-girlfriend, 21-year-old Lily James, in a bathroom at St Andrews Cathedral School. Here he's seen walking down a path before allegedly dumping the murder weapon, a hammer, in a bin and driving off. For two hours, he sits around the corner, eventually calling triple zero, alerting police to a body at the school. His call traced by operators. When police arrived, he was gone. Until this morning, around 7.40, a group of tradesmen working along the cliff's edge spotted something wedged between the rocks. Lots of noise, lots of helicopters. It almost seems like something out of a TV show. It's hard to really even accept that it's real. Rough weather made it challenging for crews. Early this afternoon, a body was retrieved, believed to be that of the 24-year-old sports teacher. It's devastating, especially living in such a beautiful spot, knowing that such tragedy happens down the road from us. It's right behind my house, so it's, um, you know, I, this is where I walk my dogs every day. Nine News has been told that Paul and Lily actually visited this street three weeks ago to see one of Lily's friends. There is a belief among some residents here that that is how Paul discovered this location where he's suspected of returning to following Lily's murder. Today at the school where Lily worked, flowers were laid for the much-loved water polo coach. Friends are remembering her as a talented dancer. While from her family, we are devastated and heartbroken by the loss of our beautiful Lily James. She was vibrant, outgoing and very much loved by her friends and family. We are tremendously grateful for the support of the community at this difficult time. The manhunt for her suspected killer may be over, but for this young woman's family, the grief will never end. After finding the body and determining his cause of death to be suicide, of course, Paul's parents, Esther and Steph, who still lived in the Netherlands, were informed of their son's death and what he just did prior. This would have been devastating, horrifying news for any parents to learn. But at this point, everyone in this case were left with so, so many questions. What could have caused this? How did Paul go from being a normal, decently well-liked sports coach to this depraved murderer? Well, some investigators and criminologists who have looked into this case had the same questions, and they gave their insight into why this could have happened the way that it did. Again, Paul was known to love sports. He was social, he loved hanging out with his friends. 
But after COVID started, people noticed that he spent a lot more time alone. He was a lot more withdrawn. His room was a mess and he seemed a lot more introverted and unpleasant towards others. And that showed that he could have been struggling mentally. Like I said earlier, some people said that Paul grew into a very controlling, manipulative, and dangerous person. He hadn't always been that way, but after returning to Australia after graduating high school, more and more people found issue with him and how he treated others. Even though the relationship between him and Lily was brief, and even though Lily most likely tiptoed around him to avoid offending him, after she ended things with him, he realized that he lost control, and Paul was not able to deal with that loss of control. Instead, he took it out on poor Lily and ended her life. It was said that after he killed her, even though he did dispose of the murder weapon, he wanted her body to be found for one reason or another. Like we discussed earlier, he used her cell phone to text Lily's dad to come pick her up from school. Usually, we see murderers using the victim's phone for the exact opposite reason. Usually, they'll use the phone to text their loved ones something like, hey, I'm gonna be out tonight, don't wait up, to prevent their loved ones from getting worried about them or looking for them. Then, four hours after the murder, he called the police himself and directed them straight to her body. For one reason or another, he wanted her body to be found. Then, as we know, after doing that, he ended his own life. So, some people involved with this case think that he sort of went mad and killed Lily because she ended things with him. However, most people who have looked into this case and saw the evidence think that he clearly planned to kill her. He borrowed that car and brought a hammer to the school on the morning of the murder. That very clearly shows premeditation. Other experts who have looked at this case say that the way that it went down is very unusual. There was no build up to this happening, at least not that we know of. He had never hit her or never physically abused her or anybody else that we know of. The relationship never got to the point of him being able to control her finances or living situation. They dated so briefly, and yet he was so desperate for control over Lily that he ended her life and his own life over a five-week fling. It's absolutely nonsensical. Then, after the murder, he could have either felt guilty or just didn't want to take accountability for what he did or both. I don't know why I think he wanted her body to be found. Sometimes when murderers make it easy for their victim's body to be found, it's for a sick reason. They want people to know that this person died at their hands. However, some people will expose what they did because they feel guilt. Without knowing Paul, without him being here to speak for his actions, we truly do not know why he killed Lily or why he wanted her body found after or why he took his own life. To me, I think he took the coward's way out and I think that he just didn't want to take accountability for the awful, awful, awful thing that he did. So, I know this case was a bit of a shorter one, but I still wanted to make sure that I covered it. This case is such an important one to discuss because it shows that no matter how long you are with someone, they still may want every ounce of control over you possible. Even if you barely know this person, if they want to control you and the relationship you have, they will do anything to make you stay for as long as they can get you to. So, if you are out there and dating and you meet someone new and even if you think things are going great, always be vigilant. Always be aware and cognizant of the red flags that someone is showing you. And if you get even the smallest feeling that something is off, it's better to listen to your gut and leave than stick around long enough to find out the hard way. All I want to say is to be careful and always listen to your intuition. It's there for a reason and if your intuition is telling you that something is off, even if you can't even put your finger on it, if you're like, something is a little bit strange about this person, I don't know exactly what it is, but if something is telling you, nagging at you that something is off, 
then something probably is, and I implore you to do what you can to stay safe. This case is truly a wild one because normally we see things like this happening with people who have been together for years, people who are living together, people who have been in on and off relationships for long periods of times, or someone who had been married for 10 years. But in this case, it's someone who knew her for five weeks and he felt such a need to have control over her and her life that when she ended their five-week non-serious relationship, he felt that he was entitled to her life. And in my opinion, I think that's why he killed her. I think he was a controlling person and I think that when he realized he could no longer control her, he took her life. And then I think he took his own life because he didn't want to take accountability for what he did. He didn't want to face his parents who loved him. He didn't want to face her parents who loved her. And he just didn't want to take accountability for it. That is what I think happened in this case. But that is where I'm going to end today's video. And now I want to know what you all think. Why do you think Paul murdered Lily? Was it control? Do you think that he's just always had this violence in him and he let it out on Lily? Why do you think he reported his own crime and took his life? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.